Hello, and welcome to Digital Rebar Training Lab 2000, teaching you how to use the Digital Rebar CLI. Highly recommend before you do this lab that you uh, work with the Start Remote Access and use the Guacamole server so that you can, as a backup, go ahead and remote access into your systems and get immediate access to the Digital Rebar CLI uh, from that uh, console. It makes things very easy if you're struggling to get the digital rebar CLI working, and you can definitely do that. Uh, the simplest place to find the digital rebar CLI that's appropriate for your endpoint is to go into Files and find the digital rebar CLI. Download the one that's appropriate for you. Let's see, I am running on an AMD Linux system. And take that file, excellent, and rename it to be DRP CLI on your system. And of course, Jamad plus exit so that you can run DRP CLI here. Now, I haven't actually completed the setup. I'm going to go ahead and need to uh, turn the system on so I can get things running. Now, in the system that I'm using, I haven't changed the default password yet. Let's go ahead and do that just for safety. So I'm going to use the Rocket Skates user here, and I'm going to set the password to demo1234. Change that password, that looks excellent. And I also need to know the URL of the system. So we're going to take this information and we're going to set our digital rebar CLI. So I already have this set up and it's working. We're going to go ahead and set up the credentials so I can log in in this window into digital rebar. So we're going to have to identify the digital rebar endpoint which is HTTPS, and then that your that IP address, that looks excellent. And then I also need to set my the username and password that I've set. So Rocket Skates, and I set it to demo1234. And now I should be able to verify that the DRP CLI works by doing an info get. This is our most basic command. You'll notice that it returned the values of the system, even tells me the version, the DRP ID of the system. And we use JQ quite a bit. Um, so JQ is a JSON uh, querying language, and it allows us to very quickly parse something like a DRP uh, info get, where I can say JQ dot uh, DRP ID. Oops, I think it's just ID here, and it tells me exactly what my DRP ID is. We use this quite a bit in infra our infrastructure's code automation, and then anytime you're interacting with the DRP CLI, it's incredibly handy to have that type of uh, parsing ability built in. Now, you can, of course, make commands to do table output or YAML output. Those are also supported as outputs. If you don't have JQ on your system, you don't even have to load it. You can just create a symbolic link to your DRP CLI and call it JQ, user bin JQ, we have that in the instructions, so you can cut and paste that command and have JQ in included. We use it so much that we just added DRP JQ instruction set into DRP CLI. So just rename the executable, and you will have uh, fully functional JQ also. So the simplest thing we can do to get started is just look at the version of Digital Rebar CLI. That looks excellent. And this tells us exactly what we're running. You can see I'm running a TIP install with alpha and the iterations that we have since alpha. In a stable system, I would uh, see uh, 4.10.0 or 9.6. Uh, really, this is very, that's how you determine the CLI's version. If I want to see the system's version, that's actually um, in here. And you can see that it returns my digital rebar CLI version by making a server query. If I want to see what's going on, uh, and say uh, post an alert, I could say DRP CLI alerts post info and give us a lab 2000. And that's showing me that it actually posted that alert back. Let me go ahead and look in the UX and see exactly what that looks like. And then we're going to break down how these commands work and what our normal syntax is. So if I go into alerts, you'll see here is that lab that I have done and I can acknowledge it or I can look at stats or information about it. What you'll see with DRP CLI is if I was to provide DRP CLI alerts, I'm going to go ahead and get back a list of the available commands that I can use for that. And if I provide a, more information, post, I'll still get back a list of things that I can do and information about it. It's very easy to discover how the digital uh, DRP CLI 
works uh, by working in and looking at how different objects are available, posts and actions. But by and large, it's DRP CLI, the object that you're looking at, uh, say alerts, and then one of our common verbs, list, show, uh, destroy, clean, things like that. Um, this is showing me all the available alerts and exactly what status they are. If I want to get the uh, alert I just put in from this list, so let's add another alert. Looks excellent. So now if I do that list, I'm going to have multiple. I could actually say count and see how many alerts I have. But if I want to just find one from that list, I can say name and lab 2000. Sorry, lab colon is a machines filter syntax. If I just say name equals here, I will get back the exact name of the machine. We'll talk about machines in a minute and explain why machines have a special syntax from that perspective. If I wanted in the alerts to come back and get the ID, UUID associated with that, I can then say JQ RC get the last dot UUID and that will return just the UUID of that one alert. And I could actually package that into command and store it. So now I have the UUID if I want to th look things up. And there I could say DRP CLI alerts show that UUID that I just had. And I'll just return that one. But in this case, what I'd like to do is actually acknowledge that alert, which is another verb that I have available, so I can act that UUID. This is the common pattern. And if I jump over into my alerts over here, you'll notice that we have now acknowledged that alert. So it's very useful to be able to uh, take a DRP CLI command, strip out, uh, search for something that you want to see, and then uh, pull back a UUID or some type of critical identifier so that you can identify it. Name is exactly like it is uh, for machines. Every uh, Some objects have um, system generated UUIDs, machines, alerts, or examples of those, and then you need to have ways to search for them based on friendly names and things like that. So we've looked at alerts in a couple different ways. It would be really nice to be able to uh, create and play with some machines. Let's do that, DRPCLI, machines, create. We're going to create a lab uh, 2000 machine. Very basic. In this case, we've created that machine with really minimal operational controls, but we can see that it's here. That looks excellent. It's set some defaults based on what the system defaults are, and that looks great. If I want to see more about how that machine is structured, I can say DRP CLI machines show. And this is where I would say name colon lab 2000. That looks excellent. I'm going to return all of the information. Once again, I can do the same UUID. I, don't, I can just uh, JQ pull back the UUID. That looks great. The addition of uh, a dash R and C take out the color and return in raw format, so we lose the quotes and the, the colorization, which is very handy to, to understand. And if I wanted to start a workflow for this, I could just say DRP CLI machines workflow name lab 2000, and then I just provide the name of the workflow. So for example, universal start. Now if I jump back over into my UX, you'll notice the workflow here has been set to what I asked. There's still no backing infrastructure for this machine, so it's not going to start doing anything until we either put a container or a machine behind it, but it's very easy to start and change and set the workflows from that perspective. If we want to then actually make it work, we can very easily do an update for that machine. DRP CLI machines. Let me go ahead and put this in view so we can watch what's going to happen in the background while I type the command. So you'll be able to see that machine. So I'm now updating the information about Lab 2000. And I'm going to do something very simple here. I'm going to go ahead and just set the context for that machine to the DRP CLI runner. That's our most basic uh, container context. 
And when I do that, it's going to provide it with a place to start running and executing digital rebar instructions in the system. And you'll notice that context got set immediately and we're getting live events back as that workflow is able to start because the agent now is running in the context that we provided. And it's going to walk through that entire process and keep going. That looks great. Things look done. So now if we're done, we can come back, take this same system and do a cleanup command. You can destroy or clean up. Cleanup will actually run optional uh, cleanup workflows if you've provided them. And now we've deleted the machine. You'll notice that it's actually uh, been grayed out as the system recognized that it was no longer available. And if I go back and do a DRP CLI machines count, we're back to one machine in the system. Let's go back and recreate this machine. Have a little bit of fun with it. That looks great. And now I'm going to show you how to actually wait for something to happen in the machine. We are going to go and tell the machine that we want to wait, DRP CLI machines, and we're going to wait for Machine uh, Lab 2000 to have description equals Lab 2000. So when we set it up like this, we're actually telling the DRP CLI to subscribe to events waiting for the machine. And then as those events occur on the machine, we can actually detect that that uh, system has gotten to lab 2000. I'm going to move my browser up a little bit so we can watch both things happen. Go back to this lab. Here in our description, I can just put Rob and uh, save that. You'll notice the description is now going to be set for Rob. That looks great, but not what we were expecting. So if I put lab 2000 in here, click over, it actually matched the subscription, and now we get a complete. This type of process, and there is a timeout available and awaits, allows me to have systems that monitor changes in my digital rebar infrastructure as it's going, detect when it's going, and then move on. Um, that's an incredibly powerful way to approach the system. Another thing that we can do is actually watch for events. So here we can do a digital uh, rebar system. First, before I do that, I want to actually install something from the catalog, a very helpful thing to be able to do. Say catalog, we're going to install an item. We are going to tell it to install. And we are going to pick the dev library. This is a convenient library that has a whole bunch of uh, developer uh, tasks, events, alarms, and things like that for you to play with. And we're going to make sure that we install the very latest version of that. So we're going to say version tip. Uh, you could use this to install anything in the digital rebar catalog, super easy, including digital rebar itself. And it'll perform an upgrade of the digital rebar system out of our online catalog for you. So now that I've done that, I want to tell it to DRP CLI events, watch contents. And here I'm going to subscribe just to content event updates. I'm going to want all of them and for the dev library. So since I've installed that dev library, I now have an ability to watch the contents. We're going to move things around a little bit again. Over here, excellent. Need to keep both things in focus. Come down to the catalog. Find the dev library right here. And if I want to say downgrade that, which I can do. When I do it, you'll see that we're actually getting events coming back through the system and uh, they're available for me to take action on or see. I'm only subscribed to those ones. If I update other catalog items because of the filter I've applied, I'm not going to see what those are. So this is my events. Uh, we have multiple ones occur. If I come back and say I wanted to remove this item from the catalog, Simple enough. I'm going to get more events telling me that I've removed it. I could, of course, done that from the CLI. I have to control breakout. I could, of course, um, also removed it using the catalog. And instead of installing, I could have removed it. Uh, being able to watch and track events in the system is incredibly powerful because now you have a way to uh, determine when things are happening. I could do the same thing looking at machines. 
uh, looking at only create of a specific name of machine or updates to a specific name of machine. It's a core thing that the UX is doing as it's giving you live updates, uh, and you can take advantage of that from other systems as well. Now that you've completed Lab 2000, you are much more comfortable using the Digital Rebar CLI in a wide variety of circumstances. Take time, play with it, run the advanced parts of these labs where we focus on the CLI. It is a lifesaver in many circumstances and will allow you to automate your systems in a much more uh, effective way.